Hi, Scott from Digital Fish with content that catches, and I'm planning to do a series of videos on stick baiting. This is part one. I'm going to talk about the gear you need to fish stick baits properly. Part two, I'm going to cover techniques for working and swimming the lure and tips to improve your fishing. Part three is about where to look for kingfish and handling kingfish, and there might be a part four on stick baiting off the rocks. The number one target for uh, stick baiters in New Zealand is the yellowtail kingfish. You might get lucky with uh, a marlin or maybe a tuna, um, but uh, most stick bait fishermen cut their teeth on kingfish, and that definitely is the most uh, common uh, target for uh, stick baiters. So the videos that I'm doing are really targeting beginner to intermediate stick baiters, uh, covering the gear, techniques, and where to find kingfish, basically. First, we'll talk about stick bait rods. Stick bait rods are different from popper rods. Stick bait rods have a softer tip so that when you go to sweep the lure it pulls the nose of the lure under and then through the water and then pops up at the end. Pop rods tend to have a stiffer tip so that they can drag the lure across the surface and generate that big rooster tail and commotion on the top of the water. Stick bait rods are the most common type of top water rod in New Zealand and generally stick baits are a bit more successful for kingfish than poppers. A lot of stick bait rods can work small poppers as well. There are a lot of choices of rod from main manufacturers and specialty brands. Some of the top end rods in terms of price and performance are brands like Carpenter, Smith, Fisherman, Ripple Fisher, Zenac, MC Works, CTS. Then you have the more mid-level brands like Yamaga, Sinnet, Jigging Master, Tenedu, Black Hole, Hots, Zoga, Killwell, Daiwa, Shimano, Pen, Akuma with their high end rods. And then they also have the entry level rods. I would recommend don't go out and buy the most expensive rod and reel. Try stick baiting, see if you enjoy it, see if you like it. If you get addicted, then buy something a bit more expensive and uh, better quality. It's easy to spend a lot of money on stick baiting gear and to think that uh, more expensive gear will catch more fish, but it's not actually true. Spending more time on the water will help you catch more fish. So start with entry mid-level and if you really enjoy it, you can start splashing out after that. A rod will have a PE line rating. And so this is the strength of the line that the rod is matched to. The rod will also have a lure rating as well. What weight range of lure the rod will best cast and swim. Some rods have a max drag rating on them as well. This is quite helpful for determining how hard you can push the rod with the line that you're using. The best line rating all round is PE 5 to 8. It covers a really good range of conditions throughout New Zealand. If you're fishing in the Hauraki Gulf, kingfish tend to be a bit smaller and especially if you're fishing around the workups, PE 3, 4 and 5 is ideal. If you're fishing other areas like Mare Island, Ranfurly Banks, Three Kings, White Island where the kingfish tend to be 20-30 kilos, uh, then fishing PE 6 to 8 is uh, a better choice. Or if you're fishing around reefs and you're using expensive lures, then fishing PE 6 to 8 is a better choice, just so you can uh, muscle the fish away from the reefy terrain and so that they won't bust you off. Let's talk about fishing reels. All the main brands, Daiwa, Shimano, Penn, Akuma, all have dedicated top water fishing reels. How do you know if a fishing reel is suitable for top water? Well, they've got a few different features. The first and probably most important feature is that a topwater reel has a really fast retrieve. So when you turn the handle once, it'll retrieve 120 centimeters or more of line. For smaller stick bait outfits, if you're swimming small stick baits, then a meter is the bare minimum. But preferably 120 centimeters or more of line is retrieved with every time you turn that handle. When you've been doing um, hundreds of casts throughout a day, you want something that you don't have to turn too often, otherwise it gets very tiring, but you also need, need to be able to work the lure properly as well. The next feature is drag. Basically, each reel manufacturer has a max drag rating for the reel. The max drag is not what you should be planning to fish with all the time. For example, if your reel has a max drag rating of 10 kg, your working drag is about 7 to 8 kg, which is good for PE 3 to 4 line, if its braking strain is rated at about 40 or 60 pounds. I'm simplifying it a bit, but here's a basic guide to help you work out what kind of drag rating you need in a reel based on the PE line you want to fish. Reels with higher drag ratings start to get heavier to be able to handle the higher pressure and tend to be more expensive. This is just a guide to get you started. There's a few variables to take into consideration, but these ratings mean you won't be stressing your reel after a season of topwater fishing and do a reasonable job for the line ratings. Stick bait reels need some pretty solid gearing. You're winding all the time and when a kingfish smashes your lure, uh, the, the gears get hammered. 
So it's really important that you have a fairly decent fishing reel, not a surf casting reel. It's got to have those features where it's got a high retrieve ratio, it's got um, a good max drag, and also that it's really suitable for uh, top water. Let's talk about fishing line. Basically you want about 250 to 300 meters of braid on your spool. It's a good idea to have different size spools, one for lighter line, one for heavier line. That'll help you cover different fishing situations. What does PE mean? PE is the diameter of the line that you're fishing. So if you have PE5 from any manufacturer, it should in theory fit the same amount of line on your spool. However, the breaking strain may be different. You can have one manufacturer of PE5 that breaks at 65 pound and another manufacturer of PE5 line but it breaks at 75 pounds. So most manufacturers will actually note what the PE rating and what the breaking strain of the line is. More expensive braid will tend to have a higher breaking strain for a lower PE. It'll also probably have eight strands instead of four strands and uh, cast better as well. Something important to remember about braid, you can't use the same sort of knots you use with mono. With braid, you tend to need different knots. As soon as you tie a knot in braid, it can start to weaken, so you need more specialized knots. The most popular knot for top water fishing to tie your braid to your leader is the FG knot. People also may use the PR knot or the GT knot, but the FG knot is extremely popular. It's reliable, and if you tie it well, it'll last a long time and uh, retain most of the strength of the line that you're using. So now we'll just have a quick chat about the leader. What strength leader should you use? Well, if you're using PE 3, 4 and 5, then 80 to 100 pound uh, leader is sufficient. If you're using higher uh, PE line, maybe PE 6 to 8, then 100, 120 up to 150. It also depends on the terrain that you're fishing as well. The best kind of leader for top water is not too stiff. So stiff fluorocarbon, is not so good. You can use it, but uh, softer leader material is generally better because it winds onto the spool better and casts through the guides as well. Varavis is a pretty good uh, brand for top water leader. How much leader do you use? Uh, one to two meters, one and a half is a good benchmark. You don't want to wind too much leader onto your reel, it can inhibit your casting. And what not to use to tie the leader to the lure? The AG chain knot is quite popular, but so is a clinch knot as well. The improved clinch knot or clinch knot uh, works. I've used it, I've never had any failure or breakages with it. Well, I spoke too soon. I just had my first failure. I was out with my son teaching him how to stick bait. We'd landed about six or eight fish each. This fish did a deep dive, and because there was a fair amount of line fatigue, the leader gave way. That was pretty sad. That was one of my favorite carpenter lures. Oh well, you learn the hard way sometimes. The AG chain knot's quite good. It does provide a little bit of extra shock or cushioning uh, when the kingfish strikes. With the FG knot, the PR knot, the GT knot, these knots are low profile knots, so when you go to cast, they don't get caught on the guides and offer as little resistance as possible. So how do you attach the leader to the lure? Well, I'd recommend uh, tying the leader to a swivel, which is then attached to a split ring, which is then attached to the lure. You will need split ring pliers to switch your lures out but this means that um, it helps eliminate twist in your line and your leader, and you do need good quality uh, split ring and swivels. Really good quality tackle will have a rating, a strength rating, so the swivel may be rated for 120 or 130 pound, same with the split ring. You generally want the swivel and the split ring to be rated a bit higher than the leader. For example, this is a 100 pound leader, and the swivel and the split ring are about 120, 130 pound. This helps avoid gear failure. So what sort of hooks to use on stick baits? Inline single hooks are generally the best you can use. I'd recommend uh, squashing down the barbs as well so it makes release a lot easier. I'd recommend you don't use treble hooks. Treble hooks can do a lot more damage to the fish if you're going to try and release the fish, particularly if it's undersized. There's a much greater chance we'll get caught in the throat or the gill filaments and they're much harder to remove. And if you have a stroppy kingfish in the boat and say the middle hook is hooked uh, in the fish's mouth and the end is thrashing around, there's a good chance it'll end up in your foot, in your hand, uh, somebody's leg, and it'll do a lot of damage. It has no trouble going into the skin and into bone. So um, just for safety's sake, definitely use uh, inline single hooks. Another quick note here, some guys use a treble on the middle section. It's less likely to get caught down deep in a fish's throat but it's still a bit dangerous if you're fishing in a small boat with no room. 
just be really careful if you do use a treble on the middle section. Another tip here about rigging, hook size can affect your hookup rate if the hooks are too small. Generally it's a good idea to have your rear hook pointing up. If the middle anchor point is a swivel then your middle hook will swing around but if it is a wire anchor then have the hook facing forward for better hookups. Another method of rigging hooks is to use shortened jig assist hooks. These are becoming quite popular. Let's talk about stick baits. Stick baits can be incredibly expensive, uh, but the entry level ones are about $30, $40, sometimes a bit more. Generally the entry level stick baits will be your plastic varieties. This is a uh, Maria Rapido. Uh, it takes kingfish, swims pretty good, and uh, does the job. There's other brands on the market as well like Nomad, uh, Riptide, plastic stick baits, they also take kingfish as well. If you're fishing around rocky areas uh, you want to use stick baits that you don't mind losing because that's pretty much where they end up as soon as you hook a kingfish. Other brands of stick bait, we've got uh, Starwalker, this is a Kahawai pattern and it's a sinking stick bait. Most stick baits are on the top water but you can get sinking ones as well and that can be uh, good to have in your kit just for those days when it might be very choppy on the surface or maybe the fish are feeding a bit uh, deeper down. The next level up stick baits are the wooden handmade ones uh, like Zeets. Uh, these swim really well, they're quite effective and have a really nice finish on them as well. They're mid-range, about $100-$120. I'm just going to add in another brand here that's just come onto the market. West Coast Popper is the brand name and they do have stick baits. They have a great finish and well made. What's quite impressive is that they're under $100. The top end stick baits are wooden, handmade and as you can imagine super expensive. A lot of Japanese brands are just uh, amazing craftsmanship. Carpenter are probably one of the best known top end brand of stick bait and they catch fish. Really awesome uh, but they start at 200 bucks and go up from there. You can buy used ones, second hand ones for cheaper but um, they're generally very expensive brand new. And so you generally don't want to use them around the rocks, you want to use them where um, the kingfish is less likely to bust you off and you want to be using heavier line because you don't want to see, because you don't want to start crying if you lose a stick bait. So do you need expensive stick baits to catch kingfish? The answer is no. Cheap stick baits will work, but the most important thing is that you learn how to swim them really well. Really good stick baiters can take a cheap stick bait and make it swim like a $200 stick bait and it'll catch fish. So invest more in being able to work the lure than really expensive stick baits. It's nice to have one in your bag for sure for the times that the fish may be extra fussy, but if you can swim a stick bait really well, then the cheap ones and the middle range lures work really, really well. So what other gear do you need for stick baiting? There's a few other items that are quite important and some not so important, but can really be helpful. So you'll need a pair of decent split ring pliers that can help you to change the lures over. Um, I'd highly recommend wearing Polaroid sunglasses. It's so important when you're stick baiting that you're watching your lure and to be able to see under the water, to be able to see a fish come up behind it because you know that he's there and you can start to work it better or more effectively and see what they're doing. A few other items that are good to have. A lure bag to be able to store your lures in. Uh, gloves, you can get proper top water gloves that help prevent braid cuts on your fingers but also good for helping to uh, lead the line as well. A gas can be pretty important to get your fish into the boat and I'd also recommend a measuring mat so you can actually measure the kingfish that uh, you're planning to release and send back to fight another day. So that's part one of stick baiting. Part two is going to cover how to work stick bait with some extra tips and part three covers where to find kingfish and tips on handling.